Grand Portage. We are at Lake Superior. Man, is it pretty. So we made it to Grand Marais, that's how they pronounce it, and it was supposed to be flooded and it's gorgeous. So this is the seawall, and you'll never see it calm like this, a big body of water like Lake Superior. Absolutely beautiful day. steamship that uh, sank used to deliver mail and goods here yeah and it sank uh, up north off an island and you can still see the ship bow on google earth really yeah Hey Chuck, it's birch bark. Check it out. They made the canoes out of. Thank you. 
covering. Uh huh. Fire here, so I'll smoke those out the top. Yeah. Okay. Justin, this is where they sleep on the time bath. Oh. That's your bed. And there's a little fire. Very interesting. And they're stitching. Very nice. That's what I'm talking about. Yum. The trade for trade. Since I'm supposed to be a boy as your replica, I figured I could at least say hello in French. Right. Very good, thank you so much. Anyway, love your yes, this is our our worst workshop. This is your first canoe you're looking at here, right? To my, to my point at. That's called our Montreal canoe. It's 50 foot long. It is? Long. It was about 60 foot, uh, six foot on a beam. It um. took 16 paddlers paddling out here from Montreal. Grab that paddle. Oh, super light. Isn't that something? Is that uh, virtual? I, don't, I think it's balsa. Balsa. Yeah. That's super light. It's something. It? Unbelievable. Anyway, it took them eight and a half weeks to get here from Montreal. There's a the map for the, well, the route that they had to take to get here. Okay, so it's uh, it's this route here, huh? Right, from Montreal all the way over here to go to the Grand Portage. Right here. Yeah. How eight, long? Eight and a half weeks. Eight and a half weeks. And, yeah. they, and they went across... Superior? Well, this? they stay close to shore. Right. Yeah. But they, they. But, mo yeah, sure. but mo mostly, mostly rivers and close to shore. Yeah. That's it amazing. It's amazing. So. And then what they did, what they did was. This was built by them? Yes. In Montreal? Well, they, no, this is, was built by uh, people here, but it's a, but a built scale. Oh, I see. 16 of those people? All their supplies. In 2,000 pounds of tree yeah. 2,000 pounds? Yeah, that's a ton. When did they reenact this? Oh, I, I honestly don't know. Wow, yeah. I am absolutely. But they, they, like, we figured they, they've been doing this in the 1700s. Right. Yeah. yeah. So and then see them big white packs on the end over there? They weigh 90 pounds a piece. Yeah. The Voyagers would carry two of them eight and a half miles up the portage to drop them off. And then the small canoes over on the other side, the Colorado and Northern canoes, uh -huh. they're the ones that brought the cruise down from up north. Uh, <sighs> Swap with, with them. How heavy are they? Very light. Are these replicas? Yes. Okay. The, but they brought the furs. They destined what great. Okay. The original all scaled and everything else. I guess they were, they were built here, here over the years by different uh, people that were, you know, here. So, so these chops though, huh? Oh, gosh. Hurt the tree? No, not at all. You, you, you can peel all the birds off the tree and it won't kill it. Okay. So really, the um, it's not a very thick layer of birds. No, it's very thick. Very thick. Right. Here's some. This was built to um, just... Oh, Jesus. Uh, I, well, when they chinked it, I guess it, I guess it was mostly mud. They yeah. were trying to be authentic. Yeah. This was a, one of the, the beaver plumes that we have your hang but when you get down to the main compound down there you can see a, a sample of every fur that was ever trapped up here really yeah you oh, can handle... that's the biggest beaver i've ever seen oh i've seen beavers get up to 60 pounds or better how big is that one i'd say that one there one, one, one must have weighed at least 50 pounds or better wow yeah that's a big beaver i'm a relic but i'm 2081 i'm not quite as no no i mean do you have family roots that Yes, yes, yes. A Findian? Yes. Okay, what is a Findian? Well, my, my uh, mother was Indian and my father was a Finlander. Ha, 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 ha. From Finland. That's yeah. great. Did That's we see, great. we saw that on the roadside somewhere. Finland. 
You, you saw sign. Oh, yeah, Finland and Sully, uh, probably number four. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, and, you know, I'll tell you another thing, though. Uh, Thunder Bay, have you, have you been up to Thunder Bay ever? I saw a sign. And, and Thunder Bay has the, the largest Finnish population in the world outside of Finland. Is that right? Right. It's really something. Bonjour! Bonjour! <laughs> 75% of the world's furs. Cool. So the way it works, of course, is we're trading with natives for furs. There's no trappers in the fur trade here. We simply trade with the Indians. So we have to bring in kettles, blankets, and beads, and we buy those things in Europe, ship it to our warehouses in London, to our warehouses in Montreal. In Montreal, we hire 1,500 Canadian paddlers to bring everything to the 16 buildings here. So we have the goods here. Now we have to find the Indians to trade with. So we start here in 1779. 1789, we reach the Arctic Ocean by canoe from here. No one's been there before. 1793, we take a canoe from this building to the Pacific Coast. No one's been there before. That's about 10 years before Lewis and Clark were the first ones to cross the continent. They're the first across the U.S. We crossed Canada 10 years earlier. So now out west, we have 120 trading posts, including some in the Pacific Northwest, Wisconsin, and, of course, Minnesota. It's there we trade with the Indians. So what happens here? Every summer in the 1780s and 90s, 700 paddlers come down with furs, pick up trade goods, go back to resupply. Paddlers come with trade goods, go back with furs for the world. That makes us nothing more than a Walmart distribution center. <laughs> That's what this place is. Until 1802, when we have to leave to avoid U.S. taxation threats. So, because we're a British company. This is the kitchen for the big wigs. You can go in there. This was the business hall and dining hall and entertainment hall for the big wigs. Uh, the four corner rooms in here were bedrooms. One is still a bedroom. One is now a hat shop since most of the furs are beaver. Uh, and most of the beaver goes into hat production. That'll show you how beaver hats are made. In that room, it'll show you all the trade goods that you can find at the trading posts and all the furs. So if you want to touch a mink, a bear, a fox, a skunk, whatever, they're all in there to touch. And then the final room will show you what all those swans and furs become on the market as you walk the streets of London. Uh, so check it out. Okay. That's the brick oven. There's a, a, a paddle there for bread. Oh, no way. And then a garden right by, no beyond way. it. And right in the middle oh, here. Oh, my they goodness. Cook, look they at cook this. With a pot in the middle right here. Okay. Here, let's yeah. go make some pizza for me real quick. This is their kitchen. Go make some pizza for us real quick. This is amazing. Come on. And they do. A little fresh cook. bread. They actually cook here. That is amazing. That. Well, probably works super awesome. Yep. All in use. Cedar shingles. Yeah. This was the life. Can you imagine the stories they told here? Well, we travels. And I know. All over. Wow. Back in the 1800s, it's amazing. It is amazing. Let's go see the fur room. I want to I want to touch every fur they traded. This is the Grand Canyon of Minnesota. Everybody in Minnesota needs to come here. Mhm. Mm I agree. It's some awesome history. Okay, going into the dining room and the fur room. Wow. Ooh, nice pretty. It is. Well, wow, that. When they got here, huh? On their travels? Nice view, too, out the back. Nice breeze. Show me the fur room. Okay. I must see it. Okay, let's go. Yep. All the trade goods we brought in and all the fur goods we took in. 
60% of the furs coming in are beaver. 60% of the trade goods we trade for furs are textiles. So, from pre-made clothing, blankets, and bolts of fabric is the bulk of the trade. So, also they're cedar, white cedar. Okay, yeah. So, very lightweight. So, this is for the guy in front of the big canoe. Okay. This is the Avant, right? So, he's mostly standing. He's got a longer paddle. Okay. Right, he's looking out for those rocks. He's looking out for the shallows, right? Okay, yeah. So, that's one guy in front. Right. The guy in back, called the Gouvernant, right? Big paddle, nothing more than a rudder. Okay. That one can't be cedar. Because right. that'll snap it. Okay, so that's... But it is cedar. It's really <laughs> but it shouldn't be. <laughs> yeah. Now this one, that's for all the guys in the middle of the canoe, known as the milieu. Those are very short, very narrow bladed. That's because paddling a fur trade canoe is 100% different than paddling a modern canoe. Because right? hmm. when you paddle a modern canoe today, you know you're the one moving it. You know, you feel it in your arm and in your chest. Yeah. You know when you go like this, it moves. And you do that little J-stroke at the end to make sure it stays straight. Right. These guys aren't messing with that little J-stroke. They have a guy in back who's doing all the steering with the big rudder. Right. The guys in the middle, known as the milieu, are just the pistons, right? Mm -hmm. They're just dipping that paddle in the water. And they're just, they're mm -hmm. just going. Okay? Mm -hmm. Because doing a fur trade canoe is like riding your bike downhill all day. Mm -hmm. You know, the hard part of their paddle is the first 10 minutes of the morning when you got a four ton canoe and you put that paddle in the water oh, and that thing's not moving but once you get four tons driving through the water you put that paddle in the water it just it just goes by itself <laughs> you know so then you can do that 50 stroke a minute because you're just keeping that momentum going so you see a lot of guys with wider modern strokes, oh yeah, you see a lot of guys with wider modern paddles and two-man yeah. canoes going. Let's paddle like voyagers and see if we can do fifty. Well, it's gonna kill you, yeah, yeah. you know, because you don't have that four tons of mass driving you, and you got a wide paddle. Yeah, look how the, look how narrow that is. Yeah, you just need that narrow paddle because you're just keeping that momentum going, and also that little J stroke at the end tires you out because you got that little resistance. Right. These guys don't have any resistance because they're just they're I'm just sure chucking these guys like 130 five, pounds. Five seven, yeah, five, 130 seven. pounds. Yeah, probably. And they carried their own weight. Well, mm -hmm. two, usually two ninety pound bales. Jeez. One thousand was a pretty extreme year, but, oh, but still, you know, when you see what sixty beaver looked like, <laughs> and now try to imagine one hundred and eighty three thousand here. Mm -hmm. You know. Well, I'm just trying to comprehend carrying one, let alone two of those. You know, the thing is, you can't carry one. Yeah, you need because to it, it, it's, yeah. it, it pulls you back too far. Yeah. You need that second one on top of that one, and then you lean forward and you can't walk. Oh. It's a dog you just, trot. Yeah, you're falling because you're using that weight. Right, you're using that weight to push you. So every portage is a half mile. Styles you're carrying is two ninety. So you're always carrying one sixty to one eighty. But the contracts often call for five pieces to be carried for Voyager. So let's say you get to a two mile portage. You pick up two, yeah. maybe 160, at most 180, you trot a half mile. Drop it. Go you drop back. those two. You walk back. Yeah. You we're, pick we're up two rest. more. And then, and then by the time you have one, it's almost a break. <laughs> when you go back, you got one left. Yeah. But you can't do one. Why isn't it an odd number? What the hell is the company doing? They're smart. Yeah. <laughs> you take your buddy's pack. Or your buddy takes your pack. Oh, okay. Because someone's got to grab the damn canoe. Moose right there. All right, moose. This is the so moose. These are all in order of the most common shipped out of here. This is okay. skunk. So beaver is the most common shipped out of here, followed by rats, muskrats. Okay. Followed by coons, deer, yeah. martens, bears. Badger. Look at that. I'm pretty. impressed there's a market for skunks, but yeah. Right. You know, yeah. Even, you know, they'll say they'll say so many of these, so many of these, so many wow. of these. Wolverine. And once they get past the ermine, once they get past <laughs> the weasel. <laughs> Sundry furs. Oh my goodness. Uh, yeah. oh, sundry furs is just, and, and these other things, yeah. which yeah. includes yeah. wolverine, okay. badger, and skunk. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, what's this one? Fisher. Fisher. Yeah, one of the largest members of the weasel family. We largest? Yeah. Group? That is quite big. Here's yeah. the little guy. Now, one of the other confusions in the fur trade oh, is there's a timber wolf. wolf. Yep. Yeah. I, next to it is I a knew that one, just, yeah. right? just feeling but it. But in the fur trade, they're, they're big wolves and little wolves. <laughs> okay. I mean, they are called brush wolves, too. Right, right, or prairie wolves. What's but, this yeah, one? In the fur tree, that's a coyote, but okay, that's pretty soft a for a coyote. So, yeah, same thing with the cats here. Yep. Right, you got yep. bobcat and lynx. Yep. Yep. Fur tree, cats. What's yeah. this one? Yeah, Arctic fox. Arctic fox. 
That's and a silver then, fox. So this but one the is? darker they are, the more valuable they are. Right? Silver fox. Is that during so that's a, winter or summer that they're darker? Fox. Or is it just natural? I think it's just natural. Yeah. That's a that's a cross fox. Cross, uh -huh. Ooh, that's There's a little cross on their back. There's also a gray fox between the cross fox and the silver fox. Which is this one? No, no that's, that's the red. red. This is the red fox. Right. Here's the. Oh, I didn't the see gray. The gray. There's the gray. So yeah, they're all in the there. Red. What's this one? Lynx. Oh, it's the soft. <laughs> yeah. The softest one right here. Oh man. Yeah, they're making a good comeback. Here. Wow. That's good. I was gonna say that's why you, they're so. Yeah. Gotta feel this. This is softest of all of them. Can't be what? Do you think? Yeah, pretty soft. The inner fur of the beaver is the softest, probably. But okay, hold on, I'm getting there. So soft. that's really soft. Okay, this is bobcats. Well, I recognize the bobcat. Yeah. Take the so, second one and turn it over. And so my grandfather. Yeah. Did I tell you? I don't think I told you. My no. grandfather was a fur trader, maybe one of the last, <laughs> and. Um, he had a lot of these. He had a lot of everything. I remember as a kid, I remember the little minx tails, but I, I, we, my, we still had one of these and it just was handed over to a cousin. This thing keeps getting handed down, <laughs> the bobcat fur. Okay, this is mink. more minx. Mink, mink, not minx. Was there a mink? That's mink. That's mink. And? Otter. Otter, yeah. I can tell by the top. Bear. It's pretty soft but short. Bear, super coarse and thick. And fine markings. What is this? Martin. Martin. Yeah, one of the most valuable furs. I've never visible. seen this one, yeah. so that's yeah. super soft too. Yeah. Martins, minks, fishers—they're all weasel family members. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah. And white tail deer. White tail deer. Yep. Raccoon. Raccoon. There's a coon. This would make a great cat. Coon cat. And muskrat. Muskrat. That's a kind of a thin, hard. It's light, lighter. Not and, much and hair. And beaver. And the beaver, which is this. Right. Yeah. So sixty percent of the furs are beaver. Sixty-five percent of the beaver goes into and, the world hat industry. And you said hats. So yeah. It takes about two to three of these beaver to make one of those hats up there. Wow. Because what happens is the outside hair of this beaver, the shiny, beautiful hair, that's pulled off and thrown away. The hive is cut off and thrown away, and all they're after is that soft little bracelet. Right there's some buckskin bridges right there. Oh yeah. And then uh, some clothing mm -hmm. lined with fur. Yeah, looks like mink and look like actually all that looks like mink. Wolf. Oh wow, very very very. Mm -hmm. nice. Here's the beaver they put in hats, which I never knew they had beaver in these kind of hats. Really interesting. All of those, huh? Beaver fur. Yeah, and beaver was the, the inner fur of the beaver makes the highest quality felt. Yeah. So never basically, knew that. they were felt hats. Made. Right, but I never knew there was beaver in those. Oh, badger fur toothbrushes. The finest badger fur. Yeah. Okay, what's over here? And here's some more goods. Gloves trimmed in the finest sh sheared beaver and black sable. Mm. Very nice. Mm. It's fox. Thank mm -hmm. you.
Yeah, the bugs are, bugs, bugs are kind of bad up here. See at the bottom. Brought you on the best view for lunch. Ooh, picnic lunch at the scenic overlook. Yep. Nice. Imagine this place is hopping for skiing. Oh. Pretty quiet in the summer. Crazy. Really pretty. Yeah. This is cool. Wow. Gorgeous. This is really pretty. Yes. A little bit of snow still up here. So it's just beautiful up here. We came up here just for a picnic lunch and the gondola takes you up here to ski and we've got the place to ourselves. and there's just one kind lady from france visiting and she says it's totally worth it and i would agree this is totally worth it this view
Can you believe they built all this for $75,000? still is. We have to wind that thing up every hour to keep it running. Okay. So then in the evening hours it stops. It stops now in the evening. The last wind up for it will be about five o'clock. It's, it's a hand crank. Walk this way. <laughs> okay. I know that light. Yeah. Come on in. Get around. Now, does everybody know where they're at right now? You know what? You're right. But do you know what the lighthouse is? You're standing in what is functionally the biggest grandfather clock on the Superior Lake. The idea is there is a round cylindrical weight that falls down this shaft that's 200 pounds of cast iron. It's attached to a cable that is attached to a spool and a clockwork that's upstairs. That clockwork has to be wound just like a clock. We have to wind it about once every hour. That drives the clockwork. The clockwork drives the armature, which houses the lens that turns. And that's what creates the beacon or the blink, as I call it. Because when you're out there on the lake, you don't see a uh, beacon. You just see a flash of light, a blink. That's how this thing functionally runs. You're now welcome to go upstairs. If you have any questions when you come down, please don't hesitate to ask. And it's covered with a base or a skimmer of linseed oil that keeps it from evaporating. The tank is hermetically sealed, and there's enough there's enough of a displacement with the uh, um, with the cast iron bowl that's on the bottom of that screw. You adjust it up. There's enough of the displacement that there's about this much mercury that's riding on it. It's literally floating on it. It's the mercury is so dense, and you can't displace enough of it by weight. It'll float on that mercury. And the idea is there is no moving parts and it's self lubricating. In theory, if you keep winding this thing up, it'll run forever. And to the best of my knowledge, the last time that that tank, that ballast tank, was serviced was 1972. And it's been running for 50 years like that. That is to the best of my knowledge. Tiffany, yeah, but look at the end. Look at the end on Tiffany. Yeah, Chicago. It's backwards. Oh yeah. You know what that's for? Why? Because there was a copyright infringement law lawsuit brought against uh, Tiffany of Chicago by Tiffany of New York, uh, and uh, they they won the lawsuit, the copyright lawsuit, and they won the lawsuit. Tiffany of New York did, so they said, "Fine, we won't use your name. We'll turn our N around so they're different, that's and they funny. continue to manufacture underneath wow. Tiffany with the N." turn backwards. Okay. Uh...
What a great day, huh? Mm-hmm. Yes.
I had an electric car. Wow, it's a nice stable. Right? Oh, really nice. Tiffany tiles. I think it's the white tile. Okay. Well, it must be, because the whole thing is white tile. I would call it subway tile. Yes, it is. Yeah, these just turn lights off and on. See? Wow. That's amazing. Look at that. Gold ceiling, huh? Uh, gold leaf. Oh. Wow. Were the lights like that? Uh, on correct. the molding? Very advanced. And the... It was um, for its age, wasn't it? Yeah. Wow. Uh, this museum is Dutch profile. Okay. It was what? Uh, it's set to profile on what it would have looked like in 1920. Is all this original? Uh, all the yes, drapery? Okay. So like furniture, the art. The hand carved moldings on every piece of wood. Correct. A lot of books in this place. <laughs> they were smart people. All right, thank you. Yeah, enjoy your food. It's um, exquisite, the workmanship. Wow. Hmm. Look at this.
Do you know this was built for $800,000? Oh, wow. Awesome, let's go. Let's do this. Look at that. Oh man, that is something. <clears throat> Honey, can you hand carve our stairwell when we get home? <laughs> you wouldn't do that for me? Hey. I'm serious. Yeah, I know. Hand carve the stairwell for me when we get home. Would you yeah, do it? We don't have them. Well, what about the windows? Can you do that for me? I take that. What do you think? Look at that window. Huh? It is just amazing. The detail's gorgeous. The walls are actually painted burlap. Painted burlap. Okay, tell me about the art glass. Um, so we believe the art glass was made by the Lane Art Glass Company in Minneapolis. Um, it's actually really cool because during the day you can see the flowers are kind of this like yellow orangey tone. Um, at night they're actually more of a bluish green. Oh, we. You had a hat, sweetie. Mm -hmm. Probably paper felt pelt there. they burn birch. It's a hardwood and it doesn't pop so it burns real clean. It doesn't really pop out on the floor like other woods. Wow, beautiful. More birch. They did a lot with birch, didn't they? Yep. I spy with my little eye. Love seeing those old dolls. I think that's a Hilda. Um, it's been a process because we want to go back to the Beautiful. I like this room. Helen's room. Servant quarters are pretty nice. They, wow, I like these pantries with the lighting. Quite a few servant quarters. The glass, look at this glass, I love it. Dang, that's so neat. Doorknobs are glass. Oh yeah, glass doorknobs. 
white, white bathrooms. Most of the family was home. Eight support staff maintained the wood on the estate. Eight of them, huh? Mm -hmm. Oh, look, there's some Olsons. Wow, it's amazing they could live on that. If they did, well, they, that's, they lived here, but, wow. Servant dining room, very pretty. Oh, cool. Look at this kitchen. There's more of the Subway Tiffany tile. Oh, fun. I love this kitchen. This is so pretty. Whoa. So pretty. How delightful is this? Breakfast room. <laughs> I wanted I wanted your reaction. Isn't this just charming? I absolutely love this room. This is my favorite. From the kitchen to the breakfast room. And then the view of Lake Superior out here. And then there's a terrace. Oh, that is so sweet. What a fun place. I suppose it's just a little wash basin here. That's fun. And then, what do we do? We go in here, and this would be the dining room, formal dining room. Well, that's nice too, but I sure like that breakfast room character. Colo Company of New York created the intricate chandelier due to the many hours required to polish it. It's nicknamed the Maid's Nightmare. <laughs> A nickname kept alive by our current historic housekeepers today. It takes two days to polish with a toothbrush on a stepladder. Oh my goodness, that's funny. Yeah, I can see that. Look at how much detail is in that. Wow. Big basement. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Celebrate. So I think they do some events down here.
is really funny. Over here too on this side. Where there's a will, there's a way. Right here too. <laughs> that one's good. <laughs> oh my goodness. Too funny. <laughs> Mr. Home Inspector, what are you doing? Looking at all the stuff. I know. There's some stuff, isn't there? Yep. Design and style. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It says they ran out of lime for the masonry. It's eroding. Where's the other patch you found? Most of it is good. It's a heavy gauge copper. Good stuff. Made to last. Yeah, made to last. It fixes the rotting wood before it's gone. Yep. Lots of that in the sills. That was lovely. The boathouse. There's the driftwood shark. Meet Clark. The shark. Clark the shark. Take a picture. Okay. Was born in the world February 2020. Clark sits on the shore as a reminder to keep these waters shark free. Huh? Why'd they say that? You guys are students, huh? Uh, they're students. Um, this is my full-time job, though. Oh. This is my whole life. Your whole life is beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. I agree. Very pretty. Good work.